we know that education is the key to a better life. We're not just getting people a diploma to hang on the wall. We are creating success by nurturing and developing leaders. Leaders in this world who are looking to change the world for the better. In 1973, Rachel Robinson sought to perpetuate the legacy of her late husband, baseball legend and civil rights icon, Jackie Robinson. He was critical in the effort in America to destroy the barriers of racism. And he was critical in establishing the fact that education was a vital path for African-American youth. Our family had always had special interest and concern and value for education. And so we decided it would be an educational program. From a single scholar in its first year, the Jackie Robinson Foundation has grown to support scholars on over 200 campuses and be widely recognized for excellence in supporting higher education. We now, in 2014, can boast having dispersed some $65 million in scholarship assistance and direct program services to 1,450 plus Jackie Robinson Foundation scholars and graduate fellows. The money is very important to our students, but we're so much more than that. And a big component of what we do, we administer at the Mentoring and Leadership Conference. We have a curriculum, we call it 42 Strategies for Success, that we make sure every scholar passes. In addition to our annual scholar conference in New York City, we maintain rigorous career development, internship, and mentoring programs. Okay. Having an affiliation with the foundation has definitely opened a lot of doors for me. So. We, we look at ourselves as a seven day a week, 24 hour a day support service for our students as well as a provider of financial resources. And I think that's what distinguishes this organization and that's why it's successful. One measure of that success is a nearly 100% graduation rate in a time when overall graduation rates for all ethnic groups only reaches 58% and that of African Americans hovers around 40 percent. We've also been able to impact the world at large by virtue of the fact that these scholars are required to participate in community service during their four years with us. And so last year I went to Panama and I taught financial literacy to a rural community and I think being a part of the foundation and knowing that service, public service, community service, service to your fellow man, like th those are the things we're called to do. We really want to develop leaders and contributors, and so that uh, we look at our people and say, we not only want you to get a college education, but we want you to someday have a leadership role within this society. So uh, the Jackie Robinson Foundation is a unique two-pronged approach. It provides both financial assistance as well as comprehensive services to minority college students to help them excel. And indeed, we are a pipeline for very well-prepared professionals to the corporate sector and to all sectors of society. Uh, we have people who've been successful business people, successful entrepreneurs. We've had professional athletes. We've had people who've been close to being Miss America. We have had lawyers and doctors and scientists. I personally am most proud of the people who go back to their communities and impact their communities. And underlying it all is our mission to perpetuate the legacy of the man who wore 42. So really, uh, Jack carried so many of us on his shoulders and he didn't let us fail. And I think it's up to us and we're not going to let him fail. When you become a Jackie Robinson Foundation Scholar, you are in fact a ambassador and representative of what he stood for and a shepherd of his name. So we feel that we have achieved uh, our, not just our goals, but our dreams. The very first meeting was set up by a football player who said, I want you to meet Jackie Robinson on campus. And I was a freshman and he was a senior. And the word that was out that I'd heard about him was he was big man on campus. And I thought, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's gonna bring a, a, an egotistical, you know, creature to me. But anyway, so I was all set up for this 
bad man. And when he approached me, he had the most beautiful smile. He was not only just handsome, but his, the smile was so engaging. And his manner was so quiet and respectful and supportive of, of, of me and himself in that conversation that I think I fell in love with him on that first day because we brought our cars to the campus. We drove to the campus and I found out what parking lot he was parking in so I could see him a little more often if I'd get my car over to his parking lot. But the thing that I loved about him was his, his ability to commit. He was committed to the marriage, he was committed to the family, he was committed to the team, to the uh, experiment, he was highly committed to that. And his ability to commit and see it through any difficulties for me is, is a sign in a, any person of their, their merit and their, their worthiness. Jack, I never called him Jackie, meant everything to me. We were deeply in love and we were a real partnership. I think it's difficult for the general public to know much about his private life and the family life was very important to Jack. He was a very committed person. I think the thing that I enjoyed about him early on was the sense of commitment he had to other people. I have been a Ken Burns fan for some years. I've watched his other documentaries. I felt that he's an artist at this method. And I was thrilled when he wanted to make this film. There were some painful moments because we had to relive all of the things that happened. And of course, there were a lot of joyous moments as well. My husband had a passionate belief in equality for all people, and he was determined to advance that cause. My hope is that when people see the film and think about the issues, that people will be inspired to want to do something about the need for change in America. We have something a little bit different tonight, and I hope you'll uh, be as pleased as I am. Uh, we're about to embark on summer movie season, and summer movie season means superheroes, Iron Man, Superman, you name it, and they're all going to be on the screen soon. It's not often, though, that you get a chance uh, to meet and uh, celebrate a real hero, and we have one with us tonight. I hope you'll welcome, uh, for a brief introduction, from Mrs. Uh, Jackie Robinson, Rachel Robinson. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just so delighted that the Academy is supporting the film. And I must tell you that I'm thrilled by the film. Um, waited 30 years to have it made and we've had some false starts, but uh, we've got a, a real great picture, I think. And uh, this weekend's uh, results at the theaters has encouraged us a lot to believe that this film is gonna be seen by many. I'm particularly interested in having it, children and young people see it because I think it's not only educational, but it's very inspiring. And they will get a sense of what the challenges are in life and how to turn an obstacle into a challenge and do something about it. So uh, I hope you'll enjoy the film and uh, see that all your children and young people uh, follow behind you. Thank you. You know, we all are forced to study history in school as kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You lived history. Yes, well, what I was did. That like? What was it like to live important American history? I think we never thought of it as that. It was from the very beginning, we called it a social experiment. And we agreed with Mr. Ricky that we were trying something new that needed to be done in the society. And it wasn't so much about Jackie Robinson. He was the instrument. The other thing that was very personal for us, we had been engaged for five years 
and we had agreed not to get married until I graduated from college and he got a job. You know, you mentioned Ricky, who was Branch Ricky, who ran, yes. ran the Brooklyn Dodgers. And I always wondered, was he that magnanimous an individual? Uh, not to be cynical here. Or do you think, well, maybe we'll sell a few tickets you know, to some oh, minority baseball fans? No, he was um, a, a very committed person and a very seriously committed person. So he wanted to see change take place, mm -hmm. and he wanted to be a part of that. So it was, it was wonderful to work with him because of his attitude and because it was not just, you know, let's make a little more money or let's give me a little more glory. It had to do with changing the society. You're wearing the button of 42 yes. from the movie. Yes. I take it then that the movie you liked and it was accurate. I love it. it, it it's two things that I had asked for. One, it is authentic, but it also is inspiring. And that's what I wanted, I wanted it to be. Uh, and it's certainly that way. I'm just getting uh, a lot of correspondence from children and teachers and parents who've taken children to see it. And they're coming back and talking about their own lives and w what's good and what's bad about it. And it opened up a lot of dialogue. And I'm very, very happy about that. Was there a rebirth of interest in Jackie Robinson and conversely your Jackie Robinson Foundation? Oh yes, it, it has been, uh, we've gotten, the foundation has gotten good exposure through the film and through the interest in Jack and, and through another generation uh, who suddenly know more about the, the past. And I think that's the learning that goes into this. What I took away from the movie, and you sat in the stands and you heard these taunts from fans and Jackie's on the field and he hears the taunts from the fans and that crazy manager in the other dugout yelling and screaming. How did you guys deal with that? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, it wasn't that we had to deal with that only in the ballpark. We had to deal with that in our living arrangements. There were places during that time when, particularly in the South where we went for spring training, where we couldn't be seated to eat, where we would have worry about our, our accommodations. So it was a part of the era. Uh, and um, for us, it was a challenge, and it was uh, an important challenge. We had to be together to understand that we had to meet this challenge, and we had to do something about it. And so there was a, a goal for us in it as well. Was there ever a time Jackie would come home and say, I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to explode? Never once. Really? Never once. He, he could come home angry about something that happened. And what he would do is, because we had another understanding that home was a haven. So instead of coming into the house angry and started yelling at everybody, he would go off and hit golf balls at a, at a driving range oh, near yeah. the house. And then he'd come back and he's ready to you know, sit down and be himself. But it was hard to uh, control your emotions, but it was important to control them. So how, what was it in his constitution? Because that was important to Branch Rickey that he had the right candidate to break the color barrier, yeah. but also one who wasn't going to lash out and get angry. And what was it about Jackie's I think it goes back to his mother, Mally, who was a sharecropper in Georgia when he was born and, and at the early stages of his life. And Mally was a very strong woman, a very opinionated person, and she just wasn't going to take it anymore. And she picked up her four children and moved to California, moved into an interracial neighborhood and uh, taught uh, a lot about uh, having uh, commitments, having discipline and having a way of uh, overcoming some of the things, uh, attacks that are coming to you. She had good ways to do that. It's all about mom. <laughs> tell, tell me what the foundation is doing. The foundation is doing fabulous. Uh, we were incorporated in 1973. We have graduated 1,400 students. We have over 200 in school this year. We have a 98% graduation rate, Fabulous. which is double the national average. And our program is a very, not just giving them money and wishing them well, it is really giving them money for their tuition, but also giving them an in-depth program for personal development and to help them develop their leadership potential. So it's a program that has depth and has meaning and has 
a lot of emphasis on their growth. Uh, we really want to put them out there. And they're graduating and getting jobs. That's great. Does it concern you that they played a World Series and there was not one African-American starter and that the number of blacks playing baseball has decreased over the years is now just 8.5 percent, where in the 90s it was 19 percent? Mm -hmm. It does concern me. It does concern me that uh, that we have we're still dealing with uh, discrimination in, of, of all really? kinds and uh, and other factors. There are a lot of factors that feed into those numbers. But the fact that we haven't been able to identify and attract African-Americans is a problem, I believe. And it's not just in baseball. It's in the professions. I know. And I remember you said this to President Clinton. I'm sure you've told other presidents that the job is not done. Job is not, is not done. Yeah. No. And uh, with President Obama in place and looking at the question of diversity in our society, uh, I think we, we may make some, some big steps. I hope we do. My favorite quote is that Babe Ruth changed baseball, but Jackie Robinson changed America. Uh, and Rachel was right. I love that. Thank you. Great to see you, Rachel. Thank you.